Welcome all to AKBY lecture series. In the last class, I explained what is ISCN, then discussed about the different conferences as well as the decisions of each conferences and the seven group classification of chromosomes. In this video, you will see some nomenclature rules for describing the loci of a particular chromosome. The nomenclature rules for describing the loci of each chromosome are also described by ISCN and the geneticist must follow this rule when describing or naming a chromosomal elaboration. First, I will describe fundamentals of the chromosomal nomenclature and the characteristic morphological features of a human chromosome. Chromosomes have different major landmarks. We are discussing about the major landmarks not about the minor landmarks so including they include centromere or primary constriction the bands the telomere and the secondary constrictions We will discuss each of these in detail in coming slides. First one is the centromere or the primary constrictions. The centromere divides the uh, chromosomes into a short or P arm and a long or Q arms. And the second one is certain bands. Each chromosome arm is divided into a dark and light regions here you can see the dark region and here you can see the light region so each chromosome's arm is divided into dark and light regions or cytogenetic bands that can be seen using a microscope after after uh, special staining methods the second, actually not the second one, it is third one. The third one is telomere that cap both ends of the chromosome. Here you can see the telomere and this telomere that cap the, that cap both ends of the chromosomes. In this slide, I am explaining the fourth landmark in detail, that is the secondary constriction. Some chromosomes have snail eye-like structure at the end of the short arm. Here you can see the snail eye-like structure that is called the satellite. This is termed satellite or S that are located at chromosome number 14, sorry, 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22 only in chromosome 1, 9 and 16 secondary constrictions appear near the centromere and uh, it is very thin and lightly stained. So only in chromosome 1, 9 and 16 you can see the secondary constrictions near the centromere. So here you can see the secondary constriction but it is very located very very near to the telomeric region. But in the case of one, first, tenth, and sixteenth chromosomes, the secondary constriction is very much near to the centromere. And the Y chromosome has a secondary constriction at the end of the long arm. In the case of Y chromosome, the secondary constriction is at the end of the long arm, that is Q arm. Okay. Then how to represent or name the loci or position of genes. Here you can see the two arms of the chromosome that is P arm and Q arm and each arm is divided into regions and region is numbered from centromere to the telomere that is here you can see first second region third region and fourth region and it is numbered from centromere to the telomere 
and each region is subdivided into bands and within each region bands are numbered from centromere to telomere so you can see here the numbering of the bands 1 2 3 4 etc so here you can see the numbering of the bands here it is the band and here you can see the numbering of each bands in the each regions so here in the third region you can see here the six bands and in the case of second region you can see here two bands and in the first region of the p arm you can see here the three bands and in the case of q arm of this chromosome consider this is the first chromosome and here in the q arm you can see the region 1 and region 2 region 3 and region 4 in the region 1 you can see here the two bands and the region 2 you can see here the five sub bands and in the region 3 you can see here two bands and you can see here um, another fourth region and uh, the bands are numbered here okay and so each region is subdivided into bands and within each region uh, bands are numbered from again the centromere to the telomere and bands may be again the subdivided into sub bands here you can see in this picture in the x chromosome uh, it is high resolution um, staining so here you can see the sub bands that is the bands are subdivided into another regions that is sub bands uh, and sub bands are again it is it is numbered from centromere to telomere and for karyotyping we place short arms above the long arms and basically representing a specific loci of genes on a chromosome based on ideogram includes four distinct chromosome units the chromosome number chromosome arm and the region number and band number within a region these four units are needed to describe a precise location within a specific chromosome we will di discuss the details in coming slides consider this is the seventh chromosome and if i am saying that a group of gene is located at right right at this point that is the chromosome position is the loss the genes loss is 7 p 1 3 means the so-called loss is located at p arm of seventh chromosome and the remaining number the 1 and 3 indicates that the loci is specifically at the third band of region 1. So 7P13 means location of 7p13 means the chromosome loci is at the p arm of seventh chromosome and exactly at the third band of first region of the p arm keep in mind that this is referred to as 7p13 not 7p13 If high resolution banding is used, a single band may be further subdivided into sub bands. So here you can see the sub bands using a decimal point for after the band designation. For example, if I represent the loci as 7, sorry, 7q. 2.1 it means that the loci is at the loci is at the first sub band first sub band 
of second band at the region 2 of Q arm of seventh chromosome. The subbands are also numbered from the centromere out towards the telomere. Look at this picture. The gene CFTR is located at the position 7Q31.2. So means the gene is located at the second subband of first band at the region 3 of Q arm of chromosome 7. Next, let's discuss about the karyotype descriptions. The description of any human karyotype begins with two basic components separated by a comma. First, the total number of chromosomes is listed first. So here in this example, you can see here the first is represented with starting started with uh, the total number of chromosomes followed by the representation of six chromosomes here you can see the x y x x and here it is x y okay. as the third component a description of any chromosomal abnormality is present in the third example you can see here the extra 21st chromosome and in the case of down syndrome it is represented as uh, 47 x y uh, plus 21 keep in mind that 47 comma x y comma plus 21 this is the format so iscn rules contain list of abbreviations describing the chromosomes chromosome segments and abrasions representing the chromosomal abnormalities i have listed in this table some of these abbreviations that i felt important here you can see cen for centromere CX for complex inter interchange, DEL for deletion, that is one of the abrasion, uh, and uh, here you can see H for heterochromatin, and uh, here insertion, INS for insertion, another abrasion, and here you can see invasion, INV, and uh, uh, Reciprocal translocation means RCP. Here you can see another abrasion, RCP. For satellite, it is represented as S. And for translocation, another type of transloc uh, abrasion, it is represented with the letter T, small letter T. You must understand the abbreviations in this table. And this is all about ISCN and nomenclature of chromosomes. Thank you.